global warming is accelerating. There are lots of papers pointing out that global warming is accelerating. That's the global surface increase that was published by the WMO, 1.1 degrees C. And if you look at that map in the northern hemisphere, you see climate chaos, right? You see cooling in a vast region of North America, and you see superheating up in Alaska, which is just next door, and in Siberia. So global emissions have to decline 2020. Science has determined that long ago. There you see one, 2020, there you see another, 2020, there you see another. These are all different sources. And there you see one going back to 2011 that global emissions had to decline 2020. So if people ask you what, what we have to do, simple, very simple answer. Life on Earth is our most sacred trust, right? We've got to treat it like that. Sixth extinction, November 2019 paper. Almost 40% of global flora, that's plants, is now categorized as exceedingly rare. We are losing our plants. And these species increasing are most of risk of extinction by human impacts and the climate change, which continues. So that's the latest research on the sixth extinction. About 8% of animal species, depend, eight, times, no, eight times the number of animal species depend on one plant species. So the ratio is one to eight, right? Plants really, really, really matter. There's the accelerating rate of species extinction. That's one of the papers that was published in 2016, I believe. You see an explosion of extinction from the Industrial Revolution. And there's the paper published in 2017. Now note this. This is a scientific paper entitled Biological Annihilation via the ongoing six mass extinction signified by vertebrate populations of decline. A new study, just to give you another recent study, just published in the European Commission, is that Earth's mass extinction is more severe than has been previously estimated. My friends, we are in deep, deep trouble. This is a dire emergency. We all have to get involved. We all have to get at our politicians we all have to force our politicians to do the right thing for our young people and all the children because what they're doing is the crime of all time. Atmospheric greenhouse gas pollution. This is an image that no one would have actually seen before. This is global atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration and global atmospheric methane concentration from 2000 up to November of this year. Look at the rate of acceleration of both carbon dioxide and methane. This is absolutely insane. Totally, totally insane. The ocean, 99% of habitat, living space, by far the largest component of the climate system, ultimate determinant of climate. A collapse causes mass extinction on land, 93% of all greenhouse gas added goes to the oceans. Ocean deoxygenation is occurring because of deep heating and 30% of CO2 emissions have been absorbed by the oceans, but causing a 26% increase in ocean acidity. So as we are poisoning and ruining the land and the atmosphere and the air, we are poisoning and ruining our oceans. Accelerating ocean heat up to September 2019. Look at that acceleration. Accelerating ocean deoxygenation. That's the percentage change in oxygen going down. This is accelerating ocean acidification. Very clear. That's accelerating. That line is accelerating. Recent research says that ocean acidification alone can trigger a mass earth extinction. And look at how we're continuing to acidify the ocean, pouring fossil fuel carbon dioxide into the air, more than ever before. Okay, I'm going to quit there and I uh, will pass on to what is really... Okay, um, I just wanted to say that these slides and many more are, can be found on the Climate Emergency Institute website. Also, we're giving additional press conferences on Thursday at 4.30, Saturday at 3.30, and then one next week. 
Okay, so, and we'll probably get additional ones. So please encourage uh, your friends to come to these sessions. Now I'll pass the floor over to uh, Regina. Um, hi everyone, thank you for being here. Um, and thank you um, to Peter for allowing me to give you the basis for the entire basis for why we're suffering this crisis and two minutes in which to explain it all. Um, I attended an event um, this past summer at Columbia University. It was a day-long event uh, with journalists who had come together from all over the world to discuss the climate crisis and why it is that journalism has actually been so remiss and, and failed so much in terms of conveying the importance of this crisis. And it turns out that journalists had simply been churning out data and numbers and percentages, and with all due respect to my scientific colleagues here to my left, these are the things that tend to create an environment where people are allowed to tune out. Because honestly, do people connect to 0.05 percentage increases? Do they connect to um, Force year over year forcing, not really. The people in this room, perhaps, I connect to that. Um, but the general population, or what we call gen pop, is not going to be moved by these numbers and facts and figures. They're gonna tune us all out. So um, the important thing is to connect on a human level, which is not being done. And I think one of the greatest ways that um, this, this crisis has been allowed to proliferate is there's, it's not just a crisis of the climate, it's a crisis of humanity, it's a manifestation of the crisis of the soul and the ethical nature of man which has completely gone down the drain. We have no ethics, we have no sense of connecting to others, we have no sense of responsibility or emotionality towards others and for thousands of years, what has provided the basis, whether you think it's right or wrong, what has provided the basis in terms of care for others? It has been spiritual truths and spiritual teachings. Uh, love others as one loves oneself. That's a popular uh, Christian teaching. Um, I'm, I'm a Buddhist, so one of the, the first tenets that we have to adhere to or that we ascribe to is to do no harm. Um, and, and I'm not sitting here to say that, well, unless someone has a religion, they're not going to care about the planet or others. I'm certainly not saying that. But I am saying that to completely aggregate and to um, denunciate any and all spiritual and faith traditions is to um, just cut this whole movement off at the head and just say um, to all of the billions of people who do adhere to an ethical tradition, a faith tradition, um, you're not wanted here. You're, um, uh, um, beliefs that are not able to be quantified or, or used by the scientific um, method don't count. So I just think that like taking the spirit out of nature allows us to commit great harm against nature. Um, and just one more thing, because I know that we're extremely low on time. Um, it was said, I believe it was, um, I, I forgot which one of you had said that, um, I think it was you, Peter, that global warming and the global crisis is dangerous to all life on Earth, but especially human life. And I really do beg to differ. Um, you know, humans are incredibly adaptable. We can change our, we can create microclimates. The mass extinction that we're seeing now is that of other species. And when human beings have the absolute faith that we are number one on the planet and every other life is, um, is beneath us, it's easy for us to kill that life. And one thing that we need to remember is all life is interconnected. And again, I'm pulling from the Buddhist tradition and saying this, but all life is interconnected and to um, murder any kind of life is a murder within the human spirit. And that is something that we are seeing and it's something unfortunately that we'll continue to see. So thank you for listening and um, I hope that some of that will 
Yes, uh, thank you very much for attending and please come to our additional sessions and Climate Emergency Institute and my website is paulbeckwith.net. I, I have over 500 climate change videos on every aspect of climate change. Thank you.